Good evening. This is Laws 11046, Law and the Environment. It's week 12. It's our final week. And this week, there's no particular topic in mind. I'm happy to discuss any topics that are of interest and in particular to discuss the exam. I um, have indicated in the past that the exam will be no surprises. The exam um, is five questions to be answered from a total of seven questions available. And each one of the um, questions is worth 10 marks, totaling, of course, the 50%, um, which we need for the, um, for the balance of the assessment. Now, someone's got their microphone, hasn't got their microphone. Ah, oh, that's me. All oh, right, okay, no, that's fine. So um, what I'll do is invite those of you who are online to um, ask any questions that you'd like. Um, I'll provide some additional comments and uh, we've got the chat function as well. Uh, now, firstly, Nicole, you've got some questions? I do. Um, clarify one thing first. It's five questions out of seven. Is that correct? Because it traditionally it's been four. Ah, well, definitely five. Five okay. questions out of seven. And um, they're all very short questions. So each question typically only runs for a few lines. Um, mm -hmm. which gives you an idea that they really are essay style format questions. So they're quite open-ended. Okay, so are they, are they written a little differently whilst it's essentially the same content? Are they actually written a little differently to the traditional exams? Because I'm finding some of the um, way that those are written not delightful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, um, well, put it this way, I wrote the questions, so um, I've okay. phrased them in as simple a, a straightforward manner as I can. Um, okay, that's great. My intention is not to, you know, be tricky about this. Um, but and identify they're not the topic. tricky, they're just, they're just um, you know, I guess a little bit wordy and I'm going, uh, you know, I, okay. I guess when, you, when we compare things to, well, Kellos, which is... Uh, in one of them, in uh, what that's um, 2012, I think, which was in the study guide. So obviously, something like that's not going to happen to us. Okay. Is uh, that correct? No, 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 it won't be. It won't be that. <laughs> no, you you really won't get a shock. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. Thank just, you. Would you like to ask the question? Just. Um, okay. All right, any other questions? <clears throat> oh, just uh, based on my earlier one, John, when we were talking before we started, um, the, uh, to confirm for everyone else, the, the result is an accumulation of, of um, all of the, all of the marks that we get. It's not, you must pass this final exam. You know, you no. don't have to pass each one of the assessment tasks is what I'm trying to say. That's right. Um, it will simply be a matter of accumulating the three results, the two, two assignments, each worth 25, the exam worth 50. If after totalling those three, your mark is 51, uh, then you pass the subject, even though you may have failed uh, one component. Now, Ellie, I'm um, sorry, there was one question, um, dot point. Look, you can um, introduce dot points if you like. Just be careful, though, about introducing dot points because um, of this reason. I think it's easy for the reader to gloss over gloss, uh, dot point answers. Probably that's more the fault of the reader rather than the way it's written. But... Um, uh, it is sometimes the way that uh, people go. So I'll be marking as if I'm a person reading for the first time um, the concept and um, it will be marked to some degree on the content itself, but it will be d marked to some degree on the way in which it's written and presented. So if you want to present it in dot for form, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and, um, and you may get excellent marks. But generally, it's pretty hard to do that. It's pretty hard to um, uh, get top marks if you're doing it in dot point form. So I hope that answers that uh, online question. 
I think I've given some idea of the topics. Um, you won't be surprised. Most of the things we've emphasised. Um, however, there will be some surprises. Um, let, let me explain that. Um, things which have been covered in assignment work is not uh, will not be off the table for examinations. I'm not saying that work that was done in assignment work will be on the exam, but it could be. Um, also, um, matters that I haven't stressed a lot of, there may be one or two questions that uh, sneak in. Tomorrow I'm presenting um, uh, uh, an online presentation for the two classes that I have um, in environmental law and that'll be at 5pm so you're welcome to join me um, and that will be to do with enforcement issues um, and, uh, and that could be part of the examination as well. Um, I've given a couple of videos where I've given some idea of the topics that I thought were um, of interest. Um, we brought in um, guest speakers and um, uh, clearly uh, issues in relation to uh, community litigants and uh, environmental impact assessment uh, is of interest and that might be regarded as an exam hint. Um, I'm not sure there's many more exam hints that I can give you. I've already, I suppose, given an idea of, reasonable idea of uh, the type of matters that, um, that we've, we've issued, uh, we've talked about. Are there any particular questions that people have? And the advantage of having five from seven, of course, is that um, you may not have prepared for two of them, but I wouldn't know that. All I'll, all I'll see is the five that you have prepared for. Uh, another question. Um, sorry, um, I'll just, just jump in. Um, uh, what about referencing different um, sources? That uh, is, we really need to in in the exam itself. I mean, there'll, there'll be some some serious plagiarisms going on in and around certain topics out of date. Sure, uh, I'd like you, know, you to what, reference. What, yeah, okay. sorry, to, sorry to catch off there. I'd like you to reference um, if there's a particular reason why you think you can't. Let me know. But you will have the um, source material, and um, yep. in Harvard referencing, you know, just a matter of bra open brackets, Bates, page two forty, close brackets, whatever it might be. Yeah. So yeah, I'd prefer that you did, and I assume that you'll have a plenty of material uh, available to you that you've already prepared, ready to take into the exams. Does anyone have any problems with that statement? No, it's just all going to be a little bit new and novel and um, hoping that you take the right stuff in with you. Mm, mm. It was, and, and of course, apart from just a few things, there's no real restriction on what you can take in with you, is there? So you can take in, um, you can take in a, a, a trolley load of stuff if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it. They are very little discs. Oh, are they? Okay. All right. I haven't... Yeah. <laughs> That part I'm I'm not familiar with the logistics. I'm sorry. So, and uh, are you close to each other? You know, right next to each other when you're doing these exams, or are you separated by distance? Oh no, there's a sort of like a space that a person can walk between. Oh, okay, all right. So you've you've got to do some juggling. Okay. Yes, okay. we will. All right. No, I understand. Um, should you know the the act? Um, well. You certainly need to know something, you know, clearly about the Sustainability Plan, um, Sustainable Planning Act, the EPBCA. Uh, you'll need to know that as well. Not in every se every section, but just those parts that are relevant to what we've done already. Um, we've talked about. Likewise, the Constitution. Yes, the Constitution, Section Fifty One. You'll need to be aware of that. Section 109, you might need to have a look at that as well. We've already spoken 31. about 31. 31, yep. And we've, we've discussed um, 
you know, the separation of powers issues. So I'm sure you've all got your head around that, around that role of parliament, executive and the courts. You'll remember Roger Curry spoke about issues to do with standing to sue um, and, the, and the difficulties sometimes facing environmental litigants. Yeah, uh, you would be doing the precautionary principle to it, possible or not? Yeah, actually, I think you you came on just after I um, I made this comment that um, I won't say the precautionary principle is on the paper, but what I will say is that the assignment work is not off the table. So um, topics such as the precautionary principle, which were the subject of um, uh, assignments, can can of course be um, part of the examination. No question about that. Yes, yeah, so basically anything, anything done with the four uh, assignments um, could be on the books, so to speak. Yes. Yep. And I'll be marking, yeah, I'll be marking these questions from scratch, uh, meaning that, you know, the, um, the plagiarism issue for something you've already written is not an issue. D does that make sense? So... Um, I thought you wouldn't get busted for using your own work. Oh, no, you don't. That, and that's the point I'm trying to make, that if you've presented something already as part of your assignment and it happens to be part of the examination, uh, then you can rework your own work um, and, I, and the, the, there's no penalty for that. I'm not looking for anything that's, you know, redrafted that you've done before. It's, you, can, you can present previous material. Does that make sense? Okay. I, hope every, I hope that makes sense to everyone. It's an important point. That being the case, John, is there anything um, that you would like to discuss in regards to once, and I'm not sure if all of the first ones are back, but also once all the second ones are back, hmm. if you um, would consider a summary of what you thought were um, really good points that some of the students brought up or something along those lines? Yeah, um, I try to make the, um, the answers quite uh, the comments quite extensive, but that, that is a good point. And um, certainly, as soon as I possibly can, I'll get you the results uh, just so you've got an idea of how you went. Um, definitely before the exam. Um, if I can, I'll do it this weekend. I've almost finished marking them by new, so it's not by tonight. I'll be finished marking them all. Um, but it's just a matter of whether I can, um, whether that gives an unfair advantage to people that haven't already presented their papers. So I probably can't give you your comments back, your amended um, paper, but I'll, um, I'll give that some thought. So thank you. I, I just thought that would be, you know, because I actually struggled to find um, quite a lot of relevant cases. Mm. Um, so I just thought it would be interesting if, you know, some people found some absolute pearlers and you thought that they were really worthwhile looking at, mm -hmm. um, if that would be, you know, an advantage as well too, or even just for personal benefit. Yeah, sure. Um, now, I, I suppose I better not talk too much about the assignment, but it's clear from discussions we've had before that um, people presented cases from the Land Court, uh, from the Planning and Environment Court, uh, from the New South Wales Supreme Court, it was a very popular case that was presented from that jurisdiction. That jurisdiction. Yes, and um, the, from uh, overseas as well. One interesting um, case. All of them are interesting in, in their own way, and it's what conclusions you draw from them as well. So I wouldn't say there was any absolute pearlers, um, but plenty of cases that provided insight to answer your question, I think. And um, make sure that you, you know, work your time with the exam papers. Um, try to uh, provide an even balance. Um, there's only so many marks out of 10 that you can get. The, it would be a shame if you had a perfect paper followed by three words because you ran out of time. In other words, the first five marks are much easier to get than the second five marks. John, just a, a point on that. Like they, I know it's 
going to do probably set out in an essay format, but um, is some strong dot point um, examples would be just as good as you know, for, for basically waffling lines of essay mm. as opposed to direct points and, and then just move on, you know? Sure. That, it, yeah, we, we did talk about this earlier tonight um, briefly. Dot points are fine um, and uh, there's not a problem. You can present dot points. I think that it takes more skill in writing to include it in the narrative. One thing that I quite like is if you've got a long list of dot points, for example, um, you're wanting to identify um, various uh, sections of the Act. Um, you know, let's say section 51 of the Constitution. I mean, if you quoted every uh, subsection as part of a long list, it's too easy for the reader to get to the top of it and just uh, uh, essentially say, well, there's a long list. I'll skip over that and go to the next part of the narrative. I think we all do that to a degree. You get a long list and you tend to skip over it. So the information might be there, but the question is, have you written in a style which is the most effective way to convey the message? So yeah, lists can work, but just be careful. Um, sometimes yeah, no, I'm just looking at points to work through like a four of the seven um, questions, say, for example, if you... And if you do it well, you can always sling dot points together into a creative sentence anyway, I suppose. Mm, but mm -hmm. just to, to get through, so you're getting your points on on your questions. Yep. So let's say oh, six good strong dot points would actually get you on that line there. But then you can start, when you've got that time later in the exam, you can then go back and just do your polish up bits, if you know what I mean. Like you're yep. sort of aim, aiming for the pass, but, but really striving for... Uh, credit, for instance, but at least you at least you've got your four questions covered. Mm. You know, yes. sort of sit end of it in one question, sure, with three words on. It. Absolutely, no, you can you can do that. Um, and of course, one of the problems with, in marking law, and and perhaps almost any ah. university thing, is there's certainly a degree of subjectivity to it. Um, and things that I might say to you, um, another person may have um, may even say the opposite. But what I can say is that I like to to um, read papers uh, as if I'm reading it for the first time and I really want you to be able to explain it to people. Um, I'm very, very keen on strong opening paragraphs so that you draw the reader in. I've often made comment to, to people that an effective way to do that on occasion is to use short sentences, perhaps a relatively short paragraph or series of paragraphs. It's a bit like fishing. It's a little bit like, you know, let's, let's draw you in. I want to get you in. And you can provide the meat later. Um, introductory paragraphs can sometimes be a summation, uh, but they don't have to be. Uh, that can be very effective. Introductory paragraphs that um, come in with a quotation, for example, or, or just um, identify a problem in the past and, um, and then highlight the solution, that can be a very, a very effective way as well. I do, I do like um, footnotes. Um, but that's that's the lawyer in me. In law, we use a different style of referencing altogether, so I'm just used to footnotes. Um, you can still use footnotes, perhaps, in um, a written essay, but that's a bit tricky, I guess. Um, they're just maybe some of my personal idiosyncrasies, so excuse me for that. Does anyone have any comment about you, what um, I've just said? When you use footnote, John, mm. is that basically down the bottom of Bates at the page where you've got each of the say four or five sections are just like one liners. Is that the actual footnote you're talking it about? Is, is yeah, it? but that's yeah. that's probably a bit hard in a written essay, a handwritten essay. I mean, so uh, Harvard style referencing is fine in the exam, but do reference um, just because it's a handwritten exam. That's not a license to plagiarise. The um, exam is, as I recall, three hours. Is that correct? Does anyone have a different view on that, three hours? Okay. No, that's about as far as I know. Um, I will admit I've tried the uh, module about two years ago, three years ago, but um, um, table balls up. I uh, wasn't really prepared good enough, so yeah, but it's three hours. Three hours, okay. And you all know where you have to go for your exams and you've got your time, I assume? 
I've looked at mine. Mine just, mine just says the campus. The Mundaloo campus. Oh, okay. No actual room number. All right. John, some, whether some people are aware of it or not, that they might have to contact a particular person to actually book in to make sure that they're in that exam if they're mm. at different locations. Yep. I'm not sure whether people are aware of that, but there should be some details in CQ Central where they can get that, that info from. If you're really stuck and you're nervous, um, send me an email to my private email address and I'll forward it on to the examination people. But uh, hopefully they'll give you enough information that you can uh, be at the right place at the right time. What's the fair limb, um, John, for, for each one of these answers? Um, you know, you said that you can only do so much to get 10 marks. Yes, um, yeah. So, you know, uh, the three hours is a fair amount of time, but it's going to go pretty quick. It will. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of writing. You'll, you'll have writer's cramp, no doubt, by the end of it. There's no set um, format. Now, I'll confuse you, no doubt, by saying this, but there is an art, I think, to writing simply and where you can use less words, do so, but don't fall into the trap of being overly brief. So now that I've con totally confused you, if... Um, if you can, <clears throat> say what you need to say succinctly and move on, but don't um, necessarily think, you know, that you, I mean, if there are topics that you think are on the fringe but not directly on point, then provided you've written in a succinct style, by all means, bring them in. Um, I'm not sure I can explain that any better. So there the questions aren't going to be marked on the basis of a checklist against things that I want to see, although there will be some things that I, I expect to see, and you might be um, you might be downgraded if some of the obvious points aren't included. But um, don't don't be afraid to put in something which is um, a sign of lateral thinking. Perhaps if I could use it that that term. Yes, there might be some chicken scratch coming in. Uh, there's no and there's no particular length of question. Sorry, so there's no minimum length, no maximum. You can write as many or as uh, few words as you like. All right. Well, is there anything else that we need to discuss, or are we getting close? I just had a question in regards to um, when Phil Justin did his, did his presentation. He said at one stage that uh, in Queensland we had only one level of government and we only had one house. Could you explain that? Hmm. In Queensland, um, at a state level, we do have just one house of um, parliament. We don't have a Senate. So at the federal level, of course, we have the House of Representatives and the Senate. And we'll, it'll be, we'll watch with interest what happens um, with the latest budget as to the, the role of the Senate in that regard. But in Queensland, um, we just have the one um, House of Representatives and uh, once the legislation is passed through that House, it can become uh, effective law, whereas other states and uh, the Commonwealth have a Senate where it needs to go through as well. I hope that you. answers your question. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Just, uh, side question, John. Yes, Ron. Is that any better or worse or not? Uh, oh, having the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, I, I, I'm, look, I'm not sure. I'm probably speaking anecdotally. I would think Labor voters generally would say it's better. Uh, conservative voters would generally say it's worse. Oh no, no, I can't even say that. Um, my. Or is I it have, just a words? Yes. No. Look, I, I I won't come in on that one. But if you, but if you wish to offer an opinion, uh, th th I will certainly read it. That's that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Now I told I understand the exam is on June the second at two p.m. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. June the second. Okay. Yeah. Um, we go to about five o'clock. All right. At two p.m. till five. Um, 
what happens here? Do you know what day of the week that is, June the 2nd? Monday, Monday afternoon, John. Monday, okay. I'll probably get the papers to me on Wednesday. And what they did um, last term is they gave me one night to mark them all. So I was up till 3 a.m. marking those papers to get them back the next day. So I promise I'll mark them properly, <laughs> even if I'm up till 3 a.m. But um, I, they, want them, they want them back quickly. All right. Man, there's got to be a better way of doing it than that. <laughs> oh, it's speed. You see, we've got to, the speed is important. All right. Well, look, we might wrap it up. Um, it could help. We did it in Braille, John. You could do it in your sleep. Yes, <laughs> we could do that. All right. Look, um, thank you very much for your contributions. I will be on Zoom tomorrow with the other class. Um, I'll upload it onto the Moodle website, and that may that's still examinable material potentially. So don't ignore it necessarily, but you don't have to because there's plenty of other work that you can follow through. I just want to thank you all very much for your contribution and dedication to the course. I think you've stuck at it really well, um, despite the fact that there's an awful lot of reading, and I've really enjoyed taking um, this class with you this year. So thank you very much. All right. Well, I'll stop recording. We'll stop recording uh, now. Thank you.